Lord Jesus, we bless your name, oh Lord, for setting us free. Thank you for this day of redemption. Thank you, Lord. Lord, when you redeemed us from all those things that have been holding us to ransom. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you said you will deliver even the captives that are worthy of the captures. Father, we bless your name, oh Lord, for you delivered us by the blood of Jesus. You delivered us by the power of your word. You delivered us by the power of your anointing. We are here for you again, oh Lord. Father, shine forth in our spirit, soul, and body that, Father, we will continue to move forward and proclaim your good news in all places that will be for signs and wonders in all places that, Father, the church, not only this building, but all the churches in the world, we continue to be signs and wonders in the communities. Because Jesus is a worker of miracle. That miracle will continue to happen. That your presence will be released. Those that are bound will be, will, will, be, will, be, will be set free. That those that are in prison will be loosed. And Lord, those that are blind will receive their sight back. Spiritually or physically. That Lord, everybody will continue to raise up the glory of the Lord. Proclaiming the good news. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for you are here with us. Amen. Shine forth, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I plead the blood of Jesus. Because without the blood of Jesus, it is written that no evil shall befall us. Our best come me out. And no body should trouble us. Because we have the mark of Christ on us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I thank God again for our coming out. It's not easy in such a weather like this. But for the courage, I thank God for all of us. And I know that God will continue to bless us Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we continue in our victorious time, at this time, this is the second day, and the theme for today is hindrances to victory. The song is uh, Simple songs that we can sing easily. This one says, everybody rejoice. And it's just two lines like that. Everybody rejoice and praise the Lord. Everybody rejoice and praise the Lord. So we repeat it as many times as we want and we go to another one. Everybody rejoice and praise the Lord. Yeah. 
Lord. Because our life is pressing the Lord. He must be energized. He must be enabled. That is the will of God for us.
Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we are moving forward to read the scripture. And here we are reading in Psalm 15. It's an interesting passage. I like this passage very much. Psalm 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy inn? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is content, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that swore to his own heart and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor take a reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Hallelujah. 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 They are great word of God. It may seem difficult, but we can do it by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to listen to accordion music. And the song is Victory is Mine. Victory is mine, joy is mine, peace is mine. What of you? Yes, victory is mine, peace is mine, joy is mine. Amen. Message. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We bless the name of the Lord for tonight. We glorify the Lord who has started with us yesterday. And we know that the Lord is going to bless us even more than what we had yesterday. And so as we uh, step into this message, what we have is uh, hindrances to victory. Hindrances to victory. In as much as we want to have victory, we want to be victorious in all things. Alas, there are hindrances that we need to watch, that we need to put asunder and set away from our way so that we will be able to have our victory. So I'm pray and pray that tonight the Lord will help us to get rid of all those things that are hindering our victory. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Blessed Lord, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for your words. We thank you because, Lord, you are here to bless us. Even under this revival, we want to thank you for this month of October. As the month is moving away, so, Lord, you are bringing blessings to us. And, Lord, you know we are being ushered into another month, another month, the month of peace, the month of joy, the month of victory. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will give us the light to be able to uh, see our way and get rid of all those things that are trying to hinder us from getting our victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're talking of uh, hindrances to victory. Uh, yesterday, I enumerated some words that are associated with victory. Uh, such as overcoming, winning, fighting, you know, conquering and besieging. You know, when we besiege a city, we, 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 we surround the city to capture the city. We, after capturing it, then we become what? Victorious. And so we have various things that, like that. When we are battling with something in our lives and we overcome, then we, we become overcomer. And, and as we are overcoming those problems, then we have victory. So also, when we are fighting, fighting against uh, something or uh, somewhere, that, uh, you know, we get over the, the trouble and we overtake, then we become victorious. So also, all these things we have as, you know, things that are, you know, moving us into what, what the victory means. Today, we want to move further. We want to uh, add more to them, to those things that uh, we make us to understand what it means to have victory. To be victorious, we must have our mindset on some things, some things that are just like uh, what we know as uh, uh, prosperity. You know, when we say prosperity, when we talk of success, when we talk of profit, we are on the same line. We are talking of victory. When we, when we talk of all this, we are talking of uh, victory. And when we talk of having promotion, elevation, confirmation, accommodation, or having, you know, to have a right, when we talk of, you know, uh, being elevated in the, in the presence of God, we are talking of victory. We are victorious. More so, when we talk of uh, accomplishment, when we say we are accomplishing, that, that is, we are getting victory. When we talk of triumph, we have triumphant uh, entry of Jesus into our lives. You know, when Jesus enters into our lives as he entered into Jerusalem, you know, we say we triumph because Jesus is victorious. And, you know, we talk of achievement, we talk of uh, jubilation, and we become victorious. But we need to talk of hindrances that may impede our getting the victory. We need to talk of all this. And so what are the hindrances that uh, we hinder us? Uh, let me mention one of these. One of these is what we call 
laziness. Laziness. You know, people who came yesterday, many of them are not coming today because of what? Because of laziness. Many members of the church, when they hear of uh, we are having revival, we want to have a revival, we say, oh, I'm tired already. Ah, I can't go. You know, it is laziness. And you know, the, the, the scripture is making us to, to see. Uh, if we look at that term, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4, it says, The soul of the sluggard desireth and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Be diligent. If you are diligent, you will have your victory. Many people are not getting their victory today because they are sluggard, because they are lazy, because they do not want to do. They, they are, so they, 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 they put themselves in a position of weakness. When God is saying, you are strong, he says, let the weak say, I am strong. But they will say, well, I can't go today. Oh, I can't go to work today. I'm, I'm tired. I'm this. I'm that. And you know, that's how many people are doing. Even it is what is hindering many people from developing in the presence of God. Many people find it difficult to come to church because of what? Because of laziness. They rather go and watch TV. They just sit down in the armchair and you know, rocking themselves. They will be rocking themselves. As you know, when you want to rock a baby to sleep, you will you know how to do it, oh boy. <laughs> you just you just take that baby and you continue to, you know, rock and rock and rock her and rock her as you will be like this and before you know it she's already asleep so many people are being rocked and rocked to sleep by the devil because they leave themselves into the hands of the devil and if you, are, if you don't take yourself if you don't snatch yourself away from the devil the devil will, will rock you and rock you and rock you to sleep and that is why many people are not ready and not coming forth because they are lazy. The soul of this Lord that desire. So if wishes are horses, beggars will say, I want to ride. And they will say, they will ride. But you know, it's beyond wishes. It's beyond wishes. And that is uh, why this Lord cannot have because they only desire, but they don't put any. Uh, uh, effort into getting what they desire. And now it says that the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. If you are diligent, if you are diligent to seek God, the Bible says uh, that, I mean, God says in the Bible that those who seek me will find me. If you seek the name of the Lord, if you seek the power of God, if you seek the Lord Jesus, you will find him. So that is one thing that is hindering people. They are lazy. And you know, if you are lazy, you need to get rid of that laziness because it will disturb your victory. And another thing is concealing sin. Concealing sin. You know, when you hide sin, when you, when you do not expose yourself in the presence of God, you think you can hide from this presence of God. You cannot hide. God knows all things. But it's for you just to confess. And that is why, you know, uh, the, the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13, is telling us, saying, He who covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. He who, who, who covers his sin will not prosper. But he or she who confesses and forsakes will have mercy. God will have mercy. 
Many people are not obtaining mercies today, the mercies of God today, because of what? Because they are covering their sin. The thing that God does not see them. God sees you. He understands what you are doing. He knows where you are. And that is why your victory over sin is being hindered. Because you are not confessing. You are not coming, you know, with your own heart into the presence of God to say, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me. That's one of the things that people find difficult to say. Forgive me. Forgive me, I have sinned. Uh, forgive me, I've done wrong. The Lord, forgive me. They find it difficult to say, but without confessing, he says that if you cover your sin, you will not prosper. And uh, I pray that we will take whatever is hindering our victory today and we will do the appropriate thing. He says that if we forsake our sins, if we confess and forsake our sins, we will receive forgiveness. Another thing that is hindering our Victory is failure to walk uprightly. Failure to walk uprightly. And this is what an, uh, the passage we read tonight is making us to see. If you look at Psalm 15, verses 1 and 2, it tells us, uh, Luke chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, is talking of, about, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, Having a crooked way, a fast way that will not help, but having an upright way that will help us. So Psalm 15, verse 1 says, Lord, who shall abide in your tabernacle? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and walks righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. If you walk uprightly, if you, if you walk righteousness, and if you speak the truth from your lips, then you will have your victory. Amen. So these are the things that are hindering us. You know, when we fail to walk uprightly, when we fail to tell the truth, when we fail to live in the truth, when we fail to do things that are righteous in the presence of God, when we speak perverse things from our lips, they hinder our victory. Because victory comes from the Lord. It is from the Lord. And the Lord who gives us victory wants us to live according to his will. So that's one of those things that hinder our victory. What else? What also hinders our victory? Backbiting. You know, backbiting. People backbite a lot. In your back, they begin to speak. Blah, 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 spoiling your life. Destroying you behind you. This is what backbiting means. Tearing off somebody wrongly in his absence or in her absence. This is very, very common, and it's even digging deep in the household of faith. Those who are Christians, they also engage in backbiting. This is not right. It's nothing to be mentioned in the house of God, in the presence of God. And uh, we are told in, uh, in Psalm 15 verse 3, he who backbites not with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, is the one that will be victorious. That is the one that will have victory. He who or she who doesn't backbite, who doesn't tell evil things about somebody to other people, you see something and you begin to say it in a bad way to destroy the person in his absence or in her absence. It is unacceptable in the presence of God. Amen. God hates it. If you want victory, you have to dispose of this and you have to get the victory of God by getting rid of 
backbiting. What other things? Another thing is dishonoring those who fear the Lord. You see how it bounces down. Did you see that? How it bounces. See, bam, bam. Dishonoring those who fear the Lord. If we do that, we are moving far away from our victory. We cannot be victorious when we begin to dishonor those who love God. When we begin to dishonor those who fear God. Those who do the will of God. And we begin to dishonor them. You know, and that's why the Bible says that we should honor one another. And so we fulfill the perfect love of God. Let us honor one another. When we dishonor one another and we tear one another, we are not going to be victorious in that way. And that's why Psalm 15 is telling us in verse 4, In whose eyes a vile person is content, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He who, he who swears to his own heart and changes not. If you see someone who fears, who, who swears to his own heart that he, I will never deny God, the power that God gives me, I will continue to use it, I will not let it go. The, the, the talents that God gives me, I will continue to use it, I will never let it down. And now you begin to dishonor that fellow because of the gifts that God gives. You are moving far away from victory. And he says, in whose eyes a vile person is content, a vile person, person, a worthless person, a person that is speaking blasphemy against God, a person that is doing wrong, such person, such a person is, you know, nothing to you. The, the kind of life that person is living is not attracting you in any way. It's not something that should be emulated. And you disdain that kind of life. He who does that, the Bible says that person is a blessed person. But he who honors those who fear the Lord, he who honors those who, who swear that, Lord, I will never deny you. I will never cease from pressing you. And you begin to honor such people. The Bible says, you, your victory is already enhanced. Amen. And not that alone. It says, taking bribe and lending money for usury. If you do that, you are writing a letter of divorce for your victory. You are giving a letter of divorce to your victory. And you say, you victory, bye-bye. If you begin to take pride, what, what does it mean to take pride? You know, something you are legitimate. A, a legitimate service that you need to do and you are saying that unless you give me this thing yeah. unless you give me hundred dollars I will not do it for you and this is the right of the person that you should just do it for, for him or her but you say well I will not do it for you unless you give me so 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 amount you are taking bribe and this is very common in the midst of people, they will, they will do it in a way that will not know what is going on. And you know, some people will say, well, unless I give you this position, if you, you know, if a young lady is seeking for a job, and you know, those who, who are rampant in doing and in getting bright, they will say, well, unless I pass through you, I will not allow you to get this job. And you know, like a joke, 
a, a job will not be given to, to her unless she surrenders herself to adultery, idol, adultery or fornication. That kind of thing. When you begin to do this, you are saying bye-bye to victory. Because God will face you. God will tell you you are wrong. And you see, it's also saying that uh, lending money for usury. That is, uh, somebody in the church is suffering, you have money. The person comes to you and you say, well, I will not lend you unless you will give me 10% on top when you return. And you must return to so, so, so when you do that, you are taking your money to usury. When you cannot give freely to somebody, when you cannot lend freely to somebody and take the amount that you give, but you are putting on top, I gave you, I gave you $20, you must give me uh, $22 when you give it back. You are taking usury. And God does not want that. You know, it's uh, when you go to marketplaces, they, they can be, you know, putting money into that kind of thing. But this one is, they are using money to trade and get, uh, get some profit. That is different. But what we are saying is, you lend somebody money. And you say, I will have to take $5 instead of my $10 that I gave you. You are not doing the will of God and victory is far away. And that is why Psalm 5, 15 verse 5 is telling us, He who puts not out his money to usury, nor takes reward against the innocent, the innocent, someone who is innocent in need, somebody who needs help. Instead of helping that person, you are making the trouble to be born. For that person, if, if he has money, will he come to you? If she is in, in having enough, will she come to you? And now, when she comes to you, and you put another body upon her, are you not saying that victory should get away from you? You have God gives you that you may profit, that you may help others, but you are using it to get uh, yourself rich. This is another kind of thing. There are many ways, but I'm going to stop it in this, that we need to get our victory by obeying the Lord. Come into the Lord Jesus, soak yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ, and let the Word of God enrich your life. You know, take the Word of God, study the Word of God, and you will see many things that will lead you to your victory. Amen. And so I pray that God will continue to bless us and continue to give us victory that we need for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.